This is an introductory video to standard base grading in my mathematics classroom. The basic idea of grading uh, is to help students understand where they're at in a course and to help them understand what areas they need to improve. So assessment is used to really report on and improve student learning. And grades do a reasonably good job of that. They act as a benchmark indicating the success of the student against those outcomes of that course. So you get a mark of 84 or 80. But I challenge you to try and define what does it mean to get 84, 80, or 90? What's the difference between these marks? What 4% less do you know if you are comparing the 84% student to the 80% student? What 10% differences there between the 80 and the 90. What specific skill have those students demonstrated that they know between those different grades? We don't know which 20% of things to work on with a student in particular who's getting 80% to try to get them to 100%. So grades can be used to help a student succeed. However, it needs to be paired up with some other things. In standard base grading, the grades are still reported. However, they're paired up with clear expectations of the learning goals, timely feedback, goal setting, and individualized assessment and reporting. These are the key areas where standard base grading is better at assessing a student than typical report grading or percentage grades. And similar to grades, standard-based grading grades in the standard-based system are still earned based on the demonstration of skill. So in my classroom, the learning outcomes are broken down into standards, and each standard is individually assessed. The standards are to be mastered by each student. To get to a mastery level, of course, students need to start somewhere. That knowledge acquisition accounts for 30% of their credit towards any standard. As students work towards mastery, they start with the basic knowledge acquisition. Then they learn how to apply that knowledge of each of those skills as they work towards higher level thinking, integration, synthesis, the ability to create new knowledge, evaluate the knowledge, and analyze high level thinking questions. The goal of this is to have each student acquire a mastery level of each standard by the end of the course. And I want to emphasize that because learning is a process that takes time and effort. Let's take a look at how this looks in a quiz and a test and a grade book. And we'll start with the grade book. For comparison, here's a traditional grade book where a student has different assignments, maybe out of 12 or bigger things out of 33, out of 29. Here's a bunch of different tasks that have been set for the student. And the weightings for those tasks have been arbitrarily made by the teacher so that you can see the student scored 10 out of 12 on whatever task this is, etc., uh, etc., et across the board. And it arrives at some grade average. It's actually not an average, it's a grade calculation of these marks. You can, luckily with this program, see where some students are struggling as it highlights scores that are under 50%, but you can't really get a sense of, for a particular student, what they're actually struggling with, which particular standards they are struggling with. In comparison, here's what a standard-based gradebook might look like. Along this column are the actual standards. So standard one in this case is to demonstrate an understanding of operations on and compositions of functions. And the standards are described here under this standards column. In the next column we have the percentage weighting that the department or teacher has decided upon. I've included textbook sections in this case. But this area here is the more important part. This area here shows how a student is doing starting the knowledge, acquiring knowledge level 
showing in this case I require students to show me that they can do the basic skills twice and then move on to applications and then move on to higher level thinking. Of course the only way to master a topic, which I will consider 100%, is to get to the higher level thinking. So as we start, a student starts to acquire knowledge and you can see here they have 10% of the knowledge of standard one. Now that contributes a certain amount to their overall mark. As the year goes by and they show me more knowledge, then their mark for certain areas goes up and their overall average goes up. I calculate this average based on the opportunities that a student has had uh, through testing and through assessment to show me some knowledge. If we skip ahead to a little later in the year, we now have a student who has been assessed on a number of these standards and has shown their achievement. The great thing about the standard-based grading system is the student and I, and as a parent, can know quite quickly which are the subject areas, specifically which areas of learning a student is still not quite mastering. You can see as we move into other areas that a student is being given slowly some attempts at the knowledge. They have achieved a certain level at the new knowledge. And as we go through the year, this expands and expands. One of the great things about this is I can notice, or a student can notice, where they're lacking, work on those areas, and try and improve their grade at any point during the year. That an assessment is taking place. As a teacher, I can look through a class summary of all of the marks of my students and see which areas the student body needs more work on and which areas they need more assessments to demonstrate the knowledge or the application level or the higher level thinking questions for that. One other great thing about the way that I've implemented the standard-based grading is if a student can show me an application question, it presupposes that they understand the knowledge level question. So if a student can answer a higher level thinking question, I give them credit for an application question and a knowledge question, and you can see that the mark moves up quite quickly. The overall mark is then generated and reported to the student instantaneously using this system. Of course, there are a couple of other changes that have to happen, and one of them is with tests and assessments. So here's a unit test from uh, my Pre-Calculus 12 class this year, and you can see one interesting fact is that there's no marks attached to this test. Uh, though they still have to show all their work for credit, and I have some instructions for them. And I've got a notification here of what the test question is, or uh, what this is trying to assess. So this is standard one, and it's a knowledge level question, uh, which is uh, generally a straightforward type of question. Um, can the student do it in usually one or two steps uh, without much critical thinking, um, barely any application to that question. So then I go to standard two and same thing, a knowledge level question. You can see I move through quite quickly those standards. I've broken standard five down into a number of uh, more discrete points. So uh, there's my five one, five two, and five three, and unit one ended with standard six. And then it moves on to the application questions. So here's the question that's a little bit more uh, difficult. Uh, now applying some of the knowledge, um, and here's a graph instead of just a point, and I move through some application questions, and then I get to is the, the six, and then I get to higher level thinking questions. And actually what I've done this year is I, I don't indicate, I indicate that it's a higher level thinking question that is going to be um, looking for whether or not they really have mastered their topics, um, but I don't indicate which of the standards it is. And the reason that I don't do that is that um, I don't want to indicate what the steps are for a student to complete that mastery task. If I indicated this is a higher level thinking question involved standards one and two, that would clue the student in as to what to do had they memorized those standards, which most 
of the students have done. Instead, I just say, this is the H level. It may include only one standard. It may include things from past years. It may include multiple standards. If it includes multiple standards, I give them credit for each of the standards that it includes. So through some of these H-level questions, they can quite quickly pick up multiple credit areas because not only do they get the credit for the mastery level, they get the credit for the application and the knowledge level in the system that I've designed. So in this class, there were quite a number of H-level uh, questions for them to try. Um, some students did all, uh, I believe there were six, uh, some students could only do one or two. Um, some students knew that they had already shown me how to do certain knowledge level questions. They actually skipped those on this final uh, unit test. So this assessment became individualized for each student and individualized on what that student had already shown me they could do and what students uh, needed to show me or which students needed to show me additional uh, attempts at some of the other material. And as I go through the year, I can always come back and uh, develop H-level H questions that review some of this. I can actually come back and um, do some more reassessment for some of the students later in the year. So when I go back to the gradebook, I can just give them the credit essentially at any time of the year that they can show me that knowledge and their mark can improve. This is different than a regular um, grading system where once they have a mark on a unit test, they can't change that mark. So they get, and this applies to quizzes as well, they get a quiz at the beginning of the year on say fractions or if this is a grade 12 course on functions and that's cemented in as a mark for the entire year even though they've had to apply that knowledge to a number of the other units during the year and they really have have improved, um, that they, they haven't had a chance to increase their uh, mark in any way in a regular grading system. But in a standard-based grading system, those standards are open for them to be improving their mark on those standards at any time during the year. So just to recap, in the old system, really the only way of uh, showing an, a, an increase of knowledge is to do better on future assessments or uh, to do some sort of extra credit work, or to rewrite an entire test. Whereas with standard-based grading, uh, any time that they demonstrate a higher level of understanding of any of the past standards, um, the new level of knowledge replaces that old level of knowledge at any time. Now, of course, there is another benefit um, that communication and feedback is way more accurate with standard-based grading. You remember the standards, and you remember the student who maybe only has 30% in the standard. Well, this is communicated instantly to a student which particular areas, uh, down to the textbook sections, that that student still needs to show mastery of and able to get a higher mark and able to show that they really understand that material. This is an application known as assessment for learning rather than assessment of learning. So the old systems generally assessed what did a student know and that's about it. And the new system, many new systems, standard-based grading being one of them, is really um, testing assessment for learning. So what kinds of things need to be retaught or relearned by the student? Um, how do you then go about reassessing those sorts of things? How do you achieve mastery level? Um, and the standard-based grading through having actually individualized marks for each standard really significantly and specifically show to a student what they need to study and what they need to work on to move forward. And I'll leave you with this final question that will kind of summarize standard-based grading uh, versus the older traditional styles of grading, which is, what does it mean to get 84% in the old systems? What specifically does a student know or not know to be able to achieve that mark? When you come up with the answer, I'd love to know. Thank you.